Hello dear students, welcome back to online English classes. In this session, I am going to deal with the topic letter writing. And this topic carries 5 marks in your examination. Well, in this session, we will be discussing what letter writing is all about, the types of letters, the format, and we will be focusing only on the formal letters because only formal letters are prescribed in your workbook. So before we begin to talk about the types of letters, the format, and before I explain the sample letter, let me tell you this. Letter writing is an art. It can be acquired only through the meticulous practice and it can be acquired only through the constant practice. Like all other arts, this art also has a tradition of its own and a universally accepted form has been evolved through many generations. Adhering to this form is helpful in two ways. It is convenient because it is time tested. It is because of the format, it is because of the form of the letter, the reader or the receiver of the letter knows where to expect certain essentials of the letter like the name and address of the sender, the date of the letter, the subject and its content at a glance. Let's say for example, if you are writing a letter in your own way, in your own method, without following any format, your reader or the receiver of the letter would find it very difficult to identify the essentials of the letter. And he may have to search for the details, he may have to search for the essentials at a glance. Secondly, it presents a neat appearance. The beauty of the letter lies in its physical appearance as well as in its wording, the choice of words and presentation. The external beauty of the letter contributes to its overall effect on the readers or the receiver of the letter. So the proper layout, correct punctuations, the selection of words, the choice of words and appropriate spacing and margin will create a wholesome effect on the reader or the receiver of the letter. Exchanging letters through post has taken a backseat with the advent of modern technology. But the style of communicating through letters still persists in the form of emails. Letter writing is an intricate task as it demands a meticulous attention. Nevertheless, students can fetch good marks if they are careful about what is being written, if they are careful about the format of the letter, if they really understand the format of the letter. From the examiner's point of view, the goal of letter writing is the analysis of the writing skills of the students. But from students' perspective, the aim of letter writing should be like, the letter should fill the communication gap between the sender and receiver of the letter. The letter should send out a message and it should create feelings. If it is informal letter, it should create feelings. It should create awareness and it should provoke thoughts in the reader's mind. So each letter that is written can have different objectives depending on its type. So let us understand the types of letters. Letter writing can be classified into two types. They are formal letters and informal letters. In this session, as I already told you, in this session, we will be focusing only on formal letters because only formal letters are prescribed in your workbook. So what is a formal letter? Letters which follow certain formality and a set pattern are called formal letters. Such letters are precise and directly addressing the concerned issue and they are strictly professional in nature. Formal letters are short and to the point. Now let us understand the format of formal letters. So this is the format which you need to follow. Now let me just run you through this format which you should not deviate from because the format itself carries marks. Out of 5 marks, the format carries 2 marks and the matter that is the content in the body of the letter which you have to write in 3 paragraphs not more than that carries 3 marks. So how you understand the format and how you write the format matters a lot. Now once you get the format of formal letters, what kind of letters you will get? Now there are 8 to 9 formal letters are prescribed in your workbook. They are 
leave application application for tc and migration application for closing opening and transfer of a bank account complaint letters letters seeking information letters giving information invitation letters etc and it could be a letter to the editor of the newspaper complaining about the menace of flowing garbage flowing sewage lines and too many electricity cables are running that needs to be addressed or it could be a letter to the commissioner of municipal council of your city or it could be a letter to the principal of your college or school requesting him or her to issue transfer certificate or migration certificate so these are all the formal kinds of uh, letters in which no informality can be introduced so let me just run you through this format a formal letter includes nine elements they are the first one is the sender's address and this is what we call from address the second one is the date line and the next one is inside address and this is what we call to address next comes the salutation and the fifth one is subject line and next comes the body of the letter the body of the letter is divided into three parts they are the introduction main part or middle part and then at last you have concluding part so this is the body of the letter and then you have complimentary close there are two important things that you need to remember when you close the letter they are thanking you and yours faithfully and then comes the signature and at last you have encloses if any so this is the format of formal letters which you need to follow so all the formal letters follow the same pattern and all formal letters follow the same order now let me explain all these nine elements one by one let us take the first one sender's address and this is what we call from address it is one of the most important elements of formal letter it is the address and it is the name and address of the sender one who writes the letter let's say for example if you are writing a letter you should write your name and your address but when you write it in the examination uh, in the board examination instead of writing your name and address write xyz but if you truly writing a letter addressing any office write your full name with complete address so write the sender's address on the top left hand corner of the page so this is the address on which any correspondence will takes place in future if it is necessary refrain from using any punctuation mark in the sender's address don't write from and put comma not necessary you should write only your name only your full name and your full address you should write your full name and full address with pin code so this is the correct way of writing sender's address and this is what we call from address but remember don't write from and use any punctuation mark when you write sender's address so the name address and contact details of the person who is sending the letter are written here okay the next important element of the formal letter is the date line write the date line just below the sender's address after leaving one line space so you should leave one line space and then you write the date line adhering to date month and year pattern write the date without overscripting it with st nd rd and th take for example if the date is 3 october 3 and if you have the habit of writing 1st october 2nd october or 3rd october or 4th october so don't overscript the date with st nd rd and th write only the date write only the number if the date is 3rd october you should write only 03 followed by the name of the month 
and write the name of the month in full and don't cut short the name of the month like OCT, NOV like that. It's not necessary. It's totally wrong. You should write the name of the month in full. If the name of the month is October, you should write the full name of the month like October. The first letter should be in capital letter followed by the year. So write the date in number 03 October and followed by the year pattern and write the year like 2020 and you can also write the year apostrophe 20 both are right so this is the correct pattern this is the correct way of writing the date line and avoid using any punctuation mark when you write the date line except the apostrophe for the year uh, if you choose to write apostrophe 20 otherwise don't use any punctuation mark when you write the date line so the correct way of writing the date line is 03 October 2020 or you can write apostrophe 20 when it comes to the year. The next one is the inside address and this is what we call to address. The name, designation and address of the person to whom the letter is intended to be sent should be written here. And the inside address should be written on the left hand side of the page. In the inside address, the person to whom the letter is addressed is called the addressee. So the name of the addressee forms the first line of the inside address. But if the letter is addressed to a firm or an office, the name of the firm or an office forms the first line of the inside address. But if the letter is addressed to a person of a particular office or a firm by the designation not by name in that case the designation of the person forms the first line of the inside address usually in formal letters the designation of the person forms the first line of the letter usually in formal letters the designation of the person forms the first line of the letter followed by the address of the office where the person works where the recipient works and you should write the complete address of the office where the person works including the pin code address so remember the first line of the inside address usually would be the designation of the person followed by the complete address of the office where he works so avoid using any punctuation mark when you write inside address so if the name of the recipient is unknown write the designation of the person followed by the complete address of the office where he works the next one is the salutation this is a customary greeting to the recipient of the letter if the name of the recipient is known then the salutation starts with dear followed by mr mrs and miss but if the name of the recipient is unknown or even the gender is unknown then the recipient can be addressed as dear sir or madam so if if the name of the recipient is unknown or even the gender of the person is unknown then the recipient can be addressed as dear sir or madam it is important to make sure that you are using appropriate salutation to the recipient of the letter depending on to whom the letter is being addressed take for example you can address the person as dear mr Sunil Dutt. So you can address the person as dear Mr. Sunil Dutt but not as dear Sunil or dear Mr. Sunil. If the receiver of the letter have the full name like Sunil Dutt, you should use his full name. You should not cut short his name. Avoid referring to the addressee by his first name like dear Sunil. So it is safest to use dear sir 
or madam as salutation or simply sir or madam as salutation. So avoid using any punctuation mark when you write the salutation. You can also use respected sir or madam as salutation. The next important element of formal letter is the subject line. The subject line highlights the aim of writing the letter. The subject line of any formal letter should be very brief. It should be within six to eight words and it must be preceded by the word subject followed by the colon. So the receiver of the letter through the subject line understands the purpose of the letter. So write the subject line just below the salutation after leaving one line space. So you should leave one line space before you write the subject line. So the next important element of formal letter is the body of the letter. The word body itself denotes that it is the most important part of the letter. So it may be broadly divided into three parts. They are introduction, main part or middle part and concluding part. The introduction is the portion where the subject of the letter is, is formally introduced. And it is the opening sentence of the opening paragraph where you will get the introduction to the matter which is written in the body of the letter. The next one is the main part or the middle part. This is where you can have all the details of the letter and the middle part or the main part of the body of the letter is than these two parts of the body of the letter. So the middle part of the body includes all the necessary details. So the last one is the concluding part. The concluding part is usually brief and it usually mentions the action to be taken. The concluding part may be one paragraph with two or three lines. So you can write maximum four lines in the concluding part. So the next important element of formal letter is the complementary close. The complementary close of the letter should be very polite. Your annoyance and your angry should not be reflected in a manner in which you close the letter. As I already told you, there are two important things that, that you need to remember here. They are Thank you and yours faithfully. So once you complete the body of the letter, leave two line space here and then you write thank you in the left hand side of the page just below the body of the letter. So write thank you first. The first letter should be in capital letter and next you should write yours faithfully. Remember there is no apostrophe in yours. And the second word faithfully is not capitalized. There is no any capital letters in the second word. And the first letter of the second word that is F is not capitalized. So you should not use capital letter in the second word. So the appropriate way of writing complementary close is yours faithfully. After yours, you should leave one space and then you write faithfully. F should be in small letter. Along with faithfully, you can also write yours truly. So notice that there is no apostrophe in yours and the first letter of the second word is not capitalized. It is small letter. Avoid using any punctuation mark when you write the complimentary close like thank you or yours faithfully. So write thank you just below the body of the letter after leaving two line space and write yours faithfully or yours truly just below the phrase thank you without leaving any space. So both of these things come together without leaving a space. So the next one is the signature. So after doing all these things, sign the letter just below yours faithfully or yours truly. So put your signature just below the complimentary close and once you, once you sign it, don't forget to write your full name just below your signature within brackets. 
So first you put signature, write your complete name in capital letters and put brackets and this should come just below your signature. So let's say for example, if you do the signature, just below it, you should write your name in capital letters. So this is the appropriate way of ending the letter. At the last you have enclosures. If you have any supportive documents that you need to attach to the main letter, you, you can attach the copies of relevant documents with the main letter. If you have more than one document, don't forget to mention the number of document like one, two. So this is the format that you need to follow. So dear students, I'll conclude my session here. I'll meet you in my next video. Thank you.